Well, welcome to Unit 1. For Unit 1, I want to share with you some of the big ideas in the lecture. And I don't want it to be prolonged, but I want you to focus on things that are really important and potentially life-saving. So we're going to start by looking at uh, hematocrit and what that is, and then we'll talk about blood typing and circulation in general. Okay, the first thing that you'll read about in your book is going to be hematocrit. And whenever I ask students to tell me what hematocrit is, even though they have read about it, they have a problem expressing themselves. So I can understand that because we don't spend very many minutes in our lives trying to figure out how to specifically and accurately describe things. But this is what hematocrit is. It is the proportion, look at this percent here, it is the proportion, and this is a mistake, it's not the proportion of red blood cells, it's the proportion of the blood volume, the total blood volume, that is comprised of red blood cells. And it usually runs in normal healthy people from 42 to 44 percent. Okay? And then when we spin this blood down in a centrifuge tube, the little white layer that's about 1 percent of this blood volume that's on top of the red blood cells is called the Buffy coat, and it's the white blood cells. And then the clear yellowish plasma, which is like Gatorade, sort of, kind of, is above that because it is the lightest. Red blood cells are the heaviest because they contain iron in the hemoglobin molecule. And the white cells are more substantial than plasma, so they're the next heaviest. Why is this important? Because if the hematocrit is low, it could indicate a variety of kinds of anemia. It could be a dietary caused anemia where there's iron deficiency. Some of you might remember the old advertisements on TV for Geritol. <laughs> or it could be from a peptic ulcer or other internal bleeding. It also could be because you just gave red blood at the blood bank. That's possible. Hematocrit can also be a little bit high. And it could be high because you're short on oxygen. When would you be short on oxygen but not sick? Well, if you have bad air in your home, maybe you have a carbon monoxide leak. That could happen. Um, it could be chronic. But really, the times that you are short on oxygen and not uh, unhealthy are when you move from a low altitude to a high altitude. At high altitude, the air is thinner. And your body will take about a month to respond to increase your number of red cells so your hematocrit will be higher than people who live at low altitudes so that you have enough red blood cells to carry enough oxygen so that you feel normal and you feel good. If you move to Colorado from Louisiana, for example, it will take about a month for you to feel good and you might not even notice that you don't feel good, but whenever you have strenuous activity, you will um, tire more easily and you will feel like sleeping more. But once you have increased your red blood cells so that the hematocrit's a little higher, you'll feel normal and everything will be fine. This is why our athletes train at high altitudes when they're going to an Olympics event that's going to be held at high altitudes like it did in Mexico City years ago. The next thing that I'd like you to do is concentrate on these two videos. The links are going to be below this lecture in another window so you'll be able to just click on them to open them. The first one is Paul Anderson's explanation of blood types and the second one is the Nobel Prize website blood, blood typing game. You'll find that to be fun. 
And I think you'll find Paul Anderson's explanation of blood types um, interesting and easy to understand. So what is a blood type? Again, describing accurately what this is is somewhat difficult, but it doesn't have to be. A blood type is a specific protein on the surface of red blood cells. And by convention, we have called one type, type A, another type, type B. And if you have no proteins, then neither of these proteins on your red blood cells, then you are type O. It's very important to understand this so that you can understand what types of blood may be given to a patient who needs blood. If the wrong blood type is given, given, then there is an allergic response between antibodies in your body against the blood types that you don't have. So pay close attention to this and have fun with the Nobel Prize blood typing game. Now, you will find that there's another blood type called RH factor. And we treat this separately. You either have RH factor or you do not have RH factor. Why do we treat this one separately? Well, it's because the AB blood types occur on one chromosome and the RH factor occurs on another chromosome. So you can be type A positive for RH, or you can be type A and negative for RH. If you have none of these proteins on your blood, you are O negative. And if you are no negative and the blood bank finds out, they're going to harass you to come in often because you are the universal donor. And you can give your blood to anybody without having problems with adverse reactions. But if you are A, B, have both of those, and RH positive, the nice thing about that is, since you have all of those, you have no antibodies against them, and you are lucky. You can accept anybody else's blood without having a bad reaction. And that's a good thing for you, but not a good thing for somebody who might want to get blood from you because they will have a severe reaction to any of those three proteins that you have, but they do not. It is an antigen-antibody response. It is a part of your immune system that is somewhat artificial because we create the situation. So we'll take a look very quickly at Paul Anderson's, uh, Paul Anderson's um, uh, video. Uh, so that you can see what it is and make sure you get to the right one and to the blood typing game. And by the way, since this is an antigen antibody response and you do not have antibodies against an antigen until you've been exposed to it, you have to ask the question, how did I ever get exposed to blood types that I've never been exposed to in the past because I've never had a transfusion? That is a mystery, and in the next segment, I'll share that with you. It's a very interesting and spooky thing. Okay, in this blood typing video, Paul Anderson describes how blood types are an antigen antibody response. And if you get the wrong blood type and you have antibodies in your system, against those. It will cause your red cells, no, not your red cells, it will cause the red cells that are being transfused into you to clump and block capillaries and maybe other little bit larger uh, blood vessels. This is very painful and it can be life-threatening. What is the cure for it if this happens? Transfusion with the right kind of blood. That's the cure for it. So it's important to understand what kinds of blood can be donors for one person and what types of uh, 
people that a person's blood can be given to. My blood type is one of the more common ones. I am O positive. That's about 30 some percent, 39 percent or 38 percent of the population. And I can give blood to anybody that is type O positive, type A positive, type B positive, or type AB positive. Since I am positive for RH factor, I cannot give blood to any of the other four types, which are all RH negative. That means I cannot give blood to an O negative person, an O, I mean, an A negative person, a B negative person, or an AB negative person. You see there are actually eight different blood types that are the most important in humans. But in an emergency situation, we can give plasma, which is full of nutrients, to anybody to maintain their blood volume um, because that uh, because plasma has no red blood cells therefore it has no antigens to have a reaction with okay so the Nobel Prize blood typing game is right here beep beep and we can pick a game to play oops I don't want to do that let me see if I can go back Okay, there we go. So we've got three patients here, and I'm going to select one. There it goes, and I'm going to go get some blood from that person. Wait a minute, I got to grab this with my little. There we go, and I'm going to put this blood in with the A antibody or anti serum with B anti serum and with RH anti-serum. Oh, look what happened. We have clumping. That means there was antibody against RH. But we don't have clumping in A or B. So what kind of blood are we? We are O RH positive. So we have no clumping in A or B, therefore we're O RH positive. Am I correct? Oh, you're bloody right. All right. So the next stage of this game for each patient is to give the transfusions. Now, what kind of blood were we? We were O R H positive. So can we give type A to this person? If we drag a blood up here, a bag of blood, and we need one blood type, one blood bag for this person. No, it's the wrong type. Okay. O blood. It can have O blood and it can have RH positive blood or it can have we have to go get some O blood. O it can have or it can have O R H negative. It can have the same type of blood that it is, but it can have one without the R H. So let's try this one. Yes. There we go. So that's how you play the game. And if you do it several times, you will get good at it and you'll understand what blood typing is better. And it's important that you spend some time on this because it might save somebody's life someday. Okay, bye.